Hey guys, welcome to Learn Today IGCSC. This is a tutorial video for Chemistry, Paper 4 Theory, Variant 4 2 for Major in 2023 examinations. Question 1 A list of oxides A to H is shown. Answer the following questions about the oxides A to H. Each letter may be used once, more than once, or not at all. State which of the oxides A to H. Question A Is responsible for acid rain. Cars and power stations releases nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide, which then dissolves in rain to form acid rain. So the answer for A here would be sulfur dioxide. Question B has a giant covalent structure. In your syllabus, when speaking of giant covalent structure, you should pay attention to graphite, carbon, and silicon oxide. So the answer here would be silicon oxide. Question C is a reducing agent in the blast furnace. When learning about extraction of iron from hematite, at zone 2, at high temperatures in the furnace, more cokes react with carbon dioxide, forming carbon monoxide. So this means that carbon dioxide is now reduced to form carbon monoxide. Hence, the reducing agent here would be carbon dioxide. Question D is the main constituent of bauxite. Aluminium is extracted from bauxite ore and the main constituent of bauxite is aluminium oxide. So the answer for D is aluminium oxide. Next, question E is the main impurity in iron ore. So the question is back to the extraction of iron from hematite. So the main impurities that you should know during the extraction of iron from hematite is silicon oxide. And what happens is that calcium oxide will react with silicon oxide, which is the main impurities, to form calcium silicate, which is also referred as slag. And the slag will be removed at the bottom of the blast furnace. So your answer for E is, again, silicon oxide. Last question F can be reduced by heating with copper. According to your reactivity series, copper can only display silver, gold, and platinum. Therefore, a metal that can be reduced by heating with copper would be silver oxide. Question 2. Fluorine, chlorine, and bromine are in group 7 of the periodic table. Question A. State the name given to group 7 elements. According to your periodic table, the vertical columns are called groups. And make sure you know that some groups are assigned with special names. For group 7, they can be identified as halogens. Question B. Explain why group 7 elements have similar chemical properties. All the elements in group 7 have the same valence electrons which are 7. Therefore, this is the reason why they have similar chemical properties. Question C. Complete table 2.1 to show the color and state at room temperature of some group 7 elements. So, for group 7 which are halogens, you have to remember the physical state of each element at room temperature and their color as well. Question D. Bromine has two naturally occurring isotopes, 79Br and 81Br. Part 1. State the term given to the numbers 79 and 81 in these isotopes of bromine. The top number always represents your nucleon number and the bottom number represents your proton number. You could also refer nucleon number as mass number. Question D, Part 2. Complete Table 2.2 to show the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in the atom and ion of bromine shown. Alright, let's look at the first isotope. You are not given the bottom number which is the proton number. To obtain this, we have to look into our periodic table of elements. And you can see here for bromine, we have 35 and 80. 80 is the atomic mass and 35 is the proton number for bromine. So I'm going to write 35 over here. The top number here is the nucleon number, which is the total number of proton plus neutron equals to 79. So after rearranging, we will get the neutron number equals to 44. Since this is an atom, the number of protons will be equal to the number of electrons. Next, for the second isotope, we have 81 as the nucleon number, and the number of protons remains the same as this is the same element of bromine. So now we're going to repeat the same step. 81 is the total number of protons and neutrons. So after rearranging to get neutron, we will have 46. As we can see, the charge here is negative 1. Negative 1 means that 
the outer shell of bromine has received one electron in order to become stable, meaning that initially it had 35 electrons and, after accepting one electron, it has now gained one electron to become 36 electrons. So the answer here is 36. Part 3, Table 2.3 shows the relative abundance of two naturally occurring isotopes of bromine. Calculate the relative atomic mass of bromine to one decimal place. The top number here represents the atomic mass of the elements. So when we calculate the mass, according to the percentage of relative abundance, we will get a value of 79.9. The question asks you to leave the answer in one decimal place, so you can just leave it as 79.9. Question E. Chlorine displaces bromine to form aqueous potassium bromide, but does not displace fluorine to form aqueous sodium fluoride. Part 1. Write the symbol equation for the reaction between chlorine and aqueous potassium bromide. So chlorine can be expressed as Cl2 reacting with potassium bromide. Since chlorine is placed above bromine, chlorine can displace bromine to form potassium chloride and leaving bromine. The next step is check whether or not your equation is balanced. We have two chlorine here so I'm going to put two over here. And we have two bromine here so I'm going to put two over here. So we have 2 potassium and 2 potassium as well. Now it's balanced. Part 2. State why chlorine does not displace fluorine from aqueous sodium fluoride. Since chlorine is placed below fluorine, this means that chlorine is less reactive compared to fluorine. So chlorine cannot displace fluorine. Please remember that in group 7, the elements become less reactive as it goes down the group. Question F. Aqueous silver nitrate is a colorless solution containing Ag plus ions. Part 1. Describe what is seen when aqueous silver nitrate is added to aqueous sodium chloride. Please remember the results of adding silver nitrate to halides. The halide being used here is chloride. So when silver nitrate is added to sodium chloride, we will get silver chloride and the color is white precipitate. Make sure you remember this. Part 2. Write the ionic equation for the reaction between aqueous silver nitrate and aqueous sodium chloride. Include state symbols. This is your full chemical equation and since they only want you to write the ionic equation, we're only going to pay attention to the precipitate form which is silver chloride. So the ionic equation would be like this. There's also another example here that you can take note of. Remember that the state symbol for ions are always aqueous, and for precipitate, it will always be solid. Now check if your equation is balanced. Everything is in the ratio of 1, therefore this equation is balanced. Question 3. Over 200 million tons of sulfuric acid are manufactured every year. Question A. State the name of the process used to manufacture sulfuric acid. I hope you are familiar with contact process. This is the process of producing sulfuric acid using sulfur. So the answer here is contact process. Question B. Part of the manufacture of sulfuric acid involves converting sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide. Part 1. Describe two methods by which sulfur dioxide is obtained. The methods are that firstly it's burnt in air and you roast sulfur ores in the air. Next, the conversion of sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide is a reversible reaction which can reach equilibrium. Part 1 state two features of an equilibrium. For a reaction to reach equilibrium, the forward reaction and the backward reaction has to occur at an equal rate. The next condition is that the volume, mole or concentration of a reactant and product has to be constant. Moving on, Part 3. State the typical conditions and name the catalyst used in the conversion of sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide. The conversion of sulfur dioxide into sulfur trioxide is a very common question asked in IGCSE. The catalyst is vanadium oxide, the temperature is 450 degrees Celsius and the pressure is 2 atmosphere. Please make sure you remember all these conditions. Part 4. Complete Table 3.1 to show the effect, if any, when the following changes are applied to the conversion of sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide. The forward reaction is exothermic. Only use the words increases, decreases, or no change. So there are three changes in this reaction and we will go through them one by one. Firstly, temperature decreases. Mentions here that the effect on the rate of forward reaction decreases. 
Now we need to find the effect on the concentration of sulfur trioxide at equilibrium. The effect of temperature change towards the equilibrium of a reaction can be a little bit tricky, so I have simplified this into a table. You can pause this video and copy this down. If the forward reaction is exothermic as mentioned in the question, when temperature decreases, the reactant decreases and the product increases. So SO3 being the product here, it will be increasing. The second change is pressure increases. Now, the effect of pressure change depends on the number of mole in your reactant and product. As you can see in this example, the total number of mole in your reactant is more than in product. So increasing the pressure will shift the equilibrium to the side of less gas moles, meaning that your equilibrium will shift to the right and your production will increase. So let's look into the number of moles for this reaction. The reactant has a total number of moles of 3 and the product has a total number of moles of 2. So when pressure is increased again, the equilibrium will shift to the side with fewer gas moles. So this means that your forward reaction increases and your production will increase. The last change is no catalyst. Presence of catalyst only affects the rate of reaction, meaning whether or not the reaction happens at a faster or a slower speed but it does not have any effect on the equilibrium. So the answer here would be no change. Part 5. Explain in terms of collision theory why reducing temperature decreases the rate of the forward reaction. According to collision theory, when temperature decreases, the kinetic energy of particles also decreases. This means that the frequency of collision between particles will also decrease. If the frequency of collisions of particles decreases, this will result in lesser energy. This is a pretty standard answer when you are asked to explain in terms of collision theory, so please make sure you remember how the change of temperature affects the rate of reaction. Question C. Sulfuric acid contains sulfate ions. The oxidation number of oxygen atoms in sulfate ions is negative 2. Determine the oxidation number of sulfur atoms in sulfate ions. Show your working. First of all, we need to identify the overall charge of sulfate ions. Most elements always have the same oxidation number when in a compound. So the overall charge for sulfate ions here will be negative 2. We have 1 sulfur atom and 4 oxygen atom. We are given with the oxidation number of oxygen here which is negative 2. So we can just substitute oxygen with negative 2 here. From here using your mathematical skills, rearrange it to get the value of sulfur. And you will get the oxidation number of sulfur atom positive 6.